Hello and welcome back to another episode of XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing the Royal Rumble campaign. It is time uh, to go into the second last mission and potentially third last episode, Operation Diamond Blade, where we are going uh, to infiltrate the network tower. We got 16 enemies. Keep in mind it's double enemy squad size even on those uh, little towers here. I could do it the cheesy easy peasy way by using a reaper and just move through it or we're fighting our way through it and since i've never been someone who likes the easy peasy cheesy way we're going to actually fight through it zio kim and endors as a tag team uh, will make for a really good offensive front line and we got a taxia here with uh, some extra thick healing uh, we got some uh, mm, yeah movable and immovable turrets just in case we need more firepower and that should really be it it's relatively straightforward i would have taken a psi operative with me but unfortunately roro is heavily wounded and i didn't want to wait the 16 days to be entirely honest so let's jump right into it and get it going very good we landed time to get busy as they say we are going to aim for high ground uh, some here and then we're just going to destroy every single one of them tactic seems straightforward to me i don't know what you guys think got a couple of uh, buffs here i think most of them were crit chance and hit chance so we actually should be fine and we have individual concealment i definitely remember that so kind of a overwatch trap will not work at the beginning we'll first need to lose concealment go, go, go. but that shouldn't be too difficult knowing yellow alert and just how things are typically going i am fully expecting that we're going to be very soon in a very hairy fight and Oris moves up hasn't seen anyone that's good which gives Sirkim the green lights the go ahead to also move up Solid copy. finally a taxi follows somehow the mouse oh, yeah. isn't really working well let's hope we're not seeing some misclicks that's potentially the only way how I can lose this mission or some crazy enemies that I did not have accounted for but i would generally think we are actually relatively well prepared to go into this mission oh yeah nice couple of mutants Zirkim needs to do a bit of a front lining here. I'm thinking this could be an option. Problem is uh, that uh, that would attract uh, a lot of grenades. So maybe what we're going to do instead is we're moving over here and take the full cover over there. Attacks here on the other side. Not really required on the front line. Okay, mutants are ready. I don't know, did we have individual squad targeting or uh, individual concealment or not? I think we did. Let me think how we're going to approach that. I was hoping they would stay up there. Clearly hasn't happened. Uh, so let's put Zirka more in a frontline position and Ataxia actually takes the other high ground position. 
We're not in a huge hurry. Okay. about we're positioning ourselves over not too aggressively I like the full cover here though if we go too deep uh, the uh, another pack will definitely be triggered or at least in range to be triggered so how about we're Sticking with the ob uh, obvious plan, these guys move here, these come a bit closer and then we're just going to engage on them. shortly think I believe I do have an idea it's a bit of a strange play but I think it still will work could dual strike or we could advance teamwork up that way he can place a tower be no longer hidden oh we see the mutant harrier no 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 no, no. i don't want to pull a second pack never mind abort mission we haven't lost anything it's just a cooldown But all we need to do is wait for three rounds. These guys may move away. These guys patrol, but that's fine. But almost there. Let's get uh, kill zone back up. in a bit more aggressively this time. Let's ignore that other pack and we're focusing on the mutants first. And unfortunately the other pack is still very much inside. However, that's a good start overall and we would have tactical analysis so wouldn't be the end of the world let's think that through uh, that individual squad concealment maybe we don't even have it maybe I am just overthinking this Let's start with this. We got enough shots, theoretically. This is a nice start, and they potentially will all die in the first instance anyways. Double explosion. Salvo doesn't end our turn, and now it's time to die. 
No, we did have individual squad concealment. It sucks, but it is what it is. Should have done the trick beforehand, which was essentially to give Endor this here. Endor then plays its turret. Makes himself visible, but triggers the other pack as well, but I don't care at this point. Good first uh, uh, pull. I should have not taken the. Uh, should have not taken the individual squad concealment. In my perspective, that's oftentimes simply a trap. You're thinking it's an absolute great ability, but in reality, it isn't. Should have taken a shot first, but it's okay. Also, uh, missed to get uh, rid of uh, the cover there. But with Intimidate, uh, we're taking a couple of shots. Well, now the actual action starts to happen. Guardian. Yep, we're still ready. Nice hit. Fantastic hit. Those guys suffer tactical analysis. Kill zone was unfortunately wasted. Should have played it differently, but well. Afterwards, you're always a little bit more inside. Full hindsight is 2020, as they say. Okay, so reload here. Demolition is off the table for now. But what's not off the table is a big, fat, juicy grenade. That's always on the table. This here will let both of them fall into each other. Oh, well, that's even better. Hell yeah. Zirkim, you're the best. They indeed are very much ready for a surprise. Fall down. That's not only fall damage, but he falls onto the head of the other guy. We will use our options here to do exactly what we should do, which is spawn more units in our favor. Well, I will eat my words, as that was definitely not in our favor. Mech Algorith is the main target. Good. Let's start hitting a couple of these guys. Well, that, he's already dead. Uh, He's burning, so no point in hitting him. That's a kill. The Haywire Protocol is such a tease, but I will not, under any circumstances, risk dying just for that. Instead, we're just going to kill this flank. Reload kill, easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Mutant commander. We're going to deal with him in a second. For now, let's use the turrets. Oh, 
You will take an overwatch shot from the Archon Prime. Nope, we won't. Continuing to go for the algorithm. I mean, look, we could go down here, completely in the open, do fanfire. The only thing that he could get is a turret. Not too scared about that. We do have death from above, so if we can kill something with one shot. That would be helpful. That would be a kill. Funny enough, that won't be a kill. But we could do our strike. It's maybe not the worst idea. That mutant commandant is a problem, so... Nice little critical hit, now he is ripe for a killing. Super tough, that guy. Good, the hunker down is not a problem. We can uh, work with that because panic will automatically disappear at the end of uh, the uh, at the end of their turn. Thanks to mental fortitude, a commander uh, an ability that we have unlocked already. Okay. Strange little shadow. Nice, he missed. That was important. Ooh, double miss, even better. Okay, cool. Well, I can tell you. We're going to get this guy down. Go medical. Not the wrong idea to just help our Mimic Beacon to survive. Selected turret at this point is fulfilling exactly that niche. And the mutant Damn commander is deal. dead, which is great. Uh, gotta deal with the mech. Moving, out. moving into half cover. There we go. Algorith needs to die. Oh yeah, Zirkim is onto something. Love it. Good, that sets us up for an actual kill over here. Zirkim has untouchable at the moment. Death from above allows us to help Zirkim to get another turn. And that in return allows us to hit that sniper. Rupture immediately kills it. Which I was hoping would happen. Turret moves up and then goes into Overwatch. Ah, 
Untouchable baby. Not sure if Shadow uh, Melt cares about that. Shadow Bound, rather. The answer is uh, no, it does not. Now we continue to have a problem with that. Luckily the turret has a bit of dodge. Wait, what? How can that guy start to replicate himself? Okay, we do have a problem, guys. Massive one. Endos needs healing. And we need to revive Zirkim. What a strange turn. Good. Time to get rid of these guys. Oh my lord. Good, we're doing face off. Good, Zirkim needs to die first. That's a given. The actual Zirkim advances to not shoot into full cover. Only way to shoot into half cover is by moving to here. That kill will give him well, no untouchable for you, buddy. Minimum damage prevents that. Don't want another replicate from the shadows, so that guy needs to go. Low cover. Yeah, the Overwatch will not be much better, so might as well take it, and we're lucky. Cool. That was uh, quite a few abilities used. Turret is almost down. to 13 I think the easiest way to deal with a specter is via good old pistol shots cool worked like a charm overwatch Support for Zirkim with a threat assessment. We're watching ourselves, and I think we can try to stabilize this turn. Zirkim does have two Overwatch shots if he has threat assessment on him. That's the first one. There's the second one in line. It's always cool to uh, to have that double Overwatch. Very good. Death from above. Successful. We are getting our position back in order. Texia finally takes a bit more of an aggressive position as well.
And thankfully, Yellow Alert never ceases to disappear, uh, to amaze, because uh, the enemies are just continuing to come. There we go. Mac immediately down. We got three more to go, though. Wow. What a hit. Taxia moves into half cover. Look, good shots all around. Just a tiny bit too low on damage. Uh, before we're shooting, let me try something else, which is the good old holo target. Zirkim, full cover. Well, never mind on that holo target, I suppose. Good. We have one more mutant in the center. Well, it was a biosaur trooper, but same story. Zirkim nicely moves up, and this is now the perfect angle for a chain shot. Oh yeah, lovely hit. Hmm. Target neutralized. All right, I'll go. Free reload, and then we're overwatching. More overwatch, and I tell you what. Free reload because there aren't that many enemies anymore, and big hit, kill zone. Not even I'm all over it. enemies uh, are left, so move, move, move. I think this is the end of this is the end of this mission. Yep. Well, the rest is just rushing in and hacking, unless there are reinforcements, but I doubt that that will happen. So we'll play a bit aggressively by just moving up, target seeing the target, the and then hacking it. It was a good uh, little rumble here. I'll take a look. Like I said, not the most uh, difficult mission ever in existence, but it was fun whilst it lasted. Very good. I'll leave you with the nice uh, cinematic as we're jointly enjoying uh, winning that mission and then the next episode will be the very last uh, mission, Waterworld Part 1. Resistance. Well done, Doctor. Yes, it would appear the feedback pulse is having the intended effect. Shen, status. Did it work? Advent assures us this breakthrough will be available to all citizens immediately. We go live to the speaker for more. Fellow citizens, for 20 years we have put our trust in Advent, in the elders, because we believe a better future is possible for all. Today, that trust, that belief, 
has been rewarded. Advent peacekeeping forces are traveling across the world, carrying the greatest gift from the Elder. A revolutionary gene therapy, yes, but so much more. This is an end to disease, to decay, to pain. The beginnings of a new tomorrow, available to all of us today. Truly, humanity finally takes its rightful place amongst the stars. Very good. We are going to do exactly that, taking our place amongst uh, rightful place amongst the stars. The only thing left over to do is beating up 59 enemies. So let's shortly see what we're up against because holy moly, that is a lot. Mutant Prowler Codex Collector Assassin Sectopods. Okay, uh, Pathfinders. Beleaguer, Fanatic, Bishops, Banshee, Gatekeeper, Prime. We got it all. Vanitors, Chrysalid Hunters, good old Riftkeeper too, just to make it a bit more difficult. <laughs> oh yeah, baby. Commander, we can't afford to let this operation get away from us. Even if it means sending our wounded forces back into combat. We have well, I can tell you what it means. Billy G. Sonar. Grell, Euler, Hawkbite, and, and Shooter are going to join us uh, for the final equipment. I took a Rift Beacon. Uh, we have uh, Dilly G with the Icarus suit, Dark Lance, and Shadowclaw. We got Sonar here with the Shredstorm uh, Cannon. We got uh, Rashi and these overpowered uh, Super Mac suits. Grell has the Hive Queen armor with uh, the Warlock weapon. Some healing for us. Euler has uh, the Venom rounds. This super crazy, um, the super crazy grenade, I think it was dark fire grenade or something, and another one of those suits. We got an ultra hardcore vest for Hawkbite uh, to make him nigh immune. We got the brute gauntlet for repositioning, a uh, little bit of a psi weapon, and of course a level 3 turret that will hopefully help us. I will use the summoning at the beginning because I think that the summoned soldiers are permanent and they will carry over to the final room. If not, we're going to do the final room with six people, if we're even arriving there. The name of the game for the first 52 enemies will be use as little of your permanent resources as possible and focus on trying to take no damage. That is exactly what we're going to do. See you in the final mission, guys, and have a great one. If you want to support the resistance, now is the right time to click the like button. So take care as Tygen is infusing us with the serum. Bye-bye.